In the last video we saw that solids are incompressible and rigid. They've got a fixed volume and shape. Liquids are incompressible but fluid. They've got a fixed volume but a changeable shape. And gases are compressible as well as fluid. They have a changeable volume as well as a changeable shape. Maybe we can understand why states have different properties if we zoom in to see what their molecules are doing. We'll start with solid ice, and we need to magnify it a billion times. Each green rectangle is a hundredth of the size of the one before it, so four zooms will magnify ice enough to see its molecules. The red atoms are oxygen and the white atoms are hydrogen. So what's the formula of the molecules? H2O. That means that ice molecules are the same as water molecules, so freezing water into ice hasn't changed them. Notice how they're close together. That's why ice has a fixed volume and can't be compressed. The molecules are about as close as they can get. And they're stuck in one place. They're still moving, but each molecule is moving slowly backwards and forwards around the same point. This is called vibration, and it keeps the molecules next to their neighbours. This means that the overall shape is fixed, so ice is rigid. It keeps its shape. Can you see that there's a fixed pattern in ice? Six H2O molecules form a hexagon, which forms the side of another hexagon, and so on. This pattern goes all through the 3D ice structure. It's beautiful. Now we'll zoom out again, and then zoom into liquid water. Oops, there goes an anthrax bacterium and a flu virus. Let's not drink the water. Wow, there's so many and they're really close together. No wonder water has a fixed volume and can't be squashed. That's why it's incompressible like ice. But let's get a bit closer. Notice how the molecules are still H2O. Melting ice back into water doesn't break any bonds or form new ones. So solid ice and liquid water are just different states of the same thing. This means that melting ice into water can't be a chemical reaction. We call it a physical change instead. And they're sliding past each other and bumping into each other and mingling. They're moving randomly, so there's no fixed pattern. Because the molecules can change positions, water can easily rearrange its shape so it can flow. It can easily take the shape of the container. Can you describe two ways in which the molecules are moving? They're moving from place to place. That's called translation. That's what you do when you walk across the room. The other way is rotation. That's what you do when you do a somersault or spin around. There's a third way that isn't shown, like this. What word would you use to describe this way of moving? The atoms within the H2O molecules are moving backwards and forwards as though the atoms are joined together by springs. That's another kind of vibration.
And can you see that the H2O molecules are moving a bit faster in liquid water than in solid ice? Why is that? Let's zoom out again and then zoom into some steam. Liquid water boils into gaseous steam when we heat it to 100 degrees Celsius. Steam is actually invisible, like air, so we can't actually see it with our eyes. But by zooming in and using animation, we can visualise steam's molecules. Notice how they're far apart compared to the solid and liquid states. There's a lot of space between them, so it's easy to squeeze them closer together. That's why gases have a changeable volume, so are compressible. And they're moving in straight lines until they hit something, like the wall of the container or each other. That's why they can change their shape and fill the container. Let's look a bit closer. Again, see how they're still H2O molecules. By boiling the water and turning it into a gas, we haven't broken any bonds or formed any new ones. Because the substance remains the same, boiling water is also a physical change. So ice, water and steam are all made of H2O molecules. And there's another thing. They're going fast, really fast. OK, time to get out of here. There seems to be a connection between the speed of the molecules of a substance and its temperature. Ice is the coldest form of H2O, zero or below, and its molecules go quite slowly. Water is warmer, between zero and 100, and its molecules are faster. And steam is the hottest, 100 or above with its molecules going the fastest. So heating a substance speeds up its molecules. We can also say that the molecules have more energy. We call this kind of energy, due to movement, kinetic energy. So recapping, we can see that solids have both a fixed volume and a fixed shape and they're the coldest state. If we could see their molecules, they would be closely packed together in a fixed regular pattern and vibrating backwards and forwards relatively slowly. We can see that liquids have a fixed volume but a changeable shape and they're warmer than the solid state. If we could see their molecules, they'd also be close together but randomly mingling with each other, translating, rotating and vibrating and moving faster than in solids. Gases have both a changeable volume and a changeable shape, and they're the hottest state. Their molecules are far apart, randomly arranged, mostly translating in straight lines until they collide, and moving the fastest of all the states. Finally, raising the temperature of a substance increases the speed of its molecules. That's why hot things can burn you. Their fast molecules crash into your slower skin molecules and make them go faster, or even break them apart. Ouch. Ouch.